Joining us now, Harry Lippman, former U.S. Attorney and Deputy Assistant Attorney General under President Clinton. He's now a professor at the University of California. Jill Weinbanks, former Assistant Watergate Special Prosecutor and MSNBC contributor. And John Heilman, National Affairs Analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. And Jill Weinbanks, I, I want to go to you first on this issue of what was John Dowd up to. Uh, the, the New York Times reporting on the face of it uh, indicates a possible obstruction of justice case involving John Dowd, possibly. It absolutely does. Now, we have to keep in mind that he denies that it happened. They had multiple sources that say that it did. And if he was offering a pardon in exchange for influencing the testimony, that's clearly a part of obstruction. It's exactly what happened during Watergate when they talked about pardons, when they offered hush money to keep people quiet. Uh, now we have hush money being paid to porn stars, as you've just designated them. Um, so it could be that he is in very deep trouble right now, John Dowd. And uh, Harry Lipton, give me your reading legally of where John Dowd st stands and, and what this report in the New York Times means to the case. Well, I agree with Jill. He's in, he's in the soup, and uh, I think he can be questioned by Mueller. I think the, uh, cr the crime fraud exception means that it wouldn't be privileged, and I think if not the first, either the, se the second or third question will be Jill's favorite of what did the president know and <laughs> when did he know it. Uh, the, the, because the question is, is there a conspiracy here to, to obstruct? And it wouldn't simply be, it's not even a pardon as for a, um, a quiet. Here, it's this sort of secret backroom deal is the, the potential issue, where the president, through doubt, is saying, just keep quiet, don't do anything, do exactly what Manafort has done, in fact, for these months. And there'll be a pardon at the end of the day. So that's even more sort of sinister and, and corrupt because it means there's no political check. There's no way of bringing it up for impeachment. It's, it's just a, uh, a back room wink and a nod. And John Heilman, so John Dowd was reported to have quit the Trump defense team. I yeah. said at the time we, that we have no idea. We don't know whether he was fired. We don't know whether he quit. That's just the story. Right. The story's putting out. Yep. It may now be that John Dowd was forced to leave the defense team because of this reporting that John Dowd may well have known was coming out in the New York Times, because we know the Times doesn't work on these stories in a matter of hours. They take days, sometimes weeks, to confirm this material. This is a story that has uh, deep reporting in it, and it's a story that would have to be lawyered intensely. Mm -hmm. It's a story that you would, you would need White House reaction from. You'd need John Dowd's reaction from. This is a story that did not pop out. It's also a long story yeah. uh, for by the New York Times by newspaper standards is a story that has been in the works for a while and so not only would John Dodd have known it was coming but people around the president in the president's rest of the president's legal orbit and his political orbit would have known so there's a lot of different potential places where the the looming threat of this story could have created pressure points that now uh, to your point call into question whether or not he quit I do want to make two points uh, one a legal point although I'm not a lawyer unlike our two <laughs> other guests tonight I just will say you think about John Dowd's tenure. Um, this was the guy, along with Ty Cobb, who was supposed to provide the, the sheen of respectability and the, the kind of white shoe gravitas that Donald Trump needed. And you think about the time that he spent between the, the, the lunchtime conversation in front of the New York Times mm -hmm. reporter, the tweet that he uh, claimed that he had written uh, when Donald Trump, it seems, got out of his skis on Twitter. It, this, was a, this was a debacle for John Dowd. And if this, if this reporting of the New York Times is true, it is a fitting end, uh, a fitting crown to uh, his various uh, uh, depredations uh, in his time. And then the political point. Is there anyone who doesn't believe this is true? Like, at, at, <laughs> yeah. at core, yeah. that, 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 do, that Donald Trump is, of course. The question of who offers the pardon, how the pardons get offered, what the mm -hmm. form of the pardons are, but the notion that Donald Trump is dangling pardons to people who might flip on him is a, a really important piece of news to break, mm -hmm. but is the least shocking thing that I've heard all day. Yeah, it's one of the, it has uh, instant credibility. Uh, and Harry Lippman, I want to go back to you to a legal point here. Let, yeah. uh, and this happens sometimes in cases. Uh, I, I said uh, earlier that, that John Dowd may have uh, shifted categories from criminal defense lawyer to criminal suspect. Uh, that sometimes can happen in a case. What is the obligation of a lawyer when he gets the sense or gets any indication that he's moving, he himself, she, 
she herself is moving into suspect territory in an investigation where he's representing a client? Well, look at Michael Cohen. The music stops, you get your own lawyer, you take it from there. But his obligation really preceded that. Were he moving, as he apparently was last summer, into territory where he was going to be a party to a fraud, his clear obligation would have been to withdraw then and there. Now, now he's a suspect, and he, he'll just be a normal suspect. He's got a lawyer up and hope that he can somehow soldier through. It's, I agree with what John said, but it's, you know, Dowd's a, a respectable person and that he's come out of the box with such a clear, I never said it, never did it. There, there, there may be more to the, the story, but he's, he's now changed categories and is, is in the uh, sights of the Mueller probe. Uh, and Jill, uh, just to uh, underline this, uh, it, is, it seems to me possible that this New York Times story had something to do with John Dowd withdrawing from the case or being fired uh, from the case uh, while this story was being developed by the New York Times. It absolutely could. Of course, we, we will not know for quite a while. But he's had a, a rough go of it because in addition to the tweet, which I think was very very uh, inappropriate for him to have said he did it. If he did it, it was wrong, and it's a disparable offense to have gotten your client into trouble for a tweet that said something that could implicate that person, your own client, in an obstruction. He also had a very inappropriate conversation in a public place with Ty Cobb that was very uh, uh, gave away too much and shouldn't have happened in public. So I think there's a number of things that could get him in trouble, both with the bar and with the prosecutor. And uh, John Heilman, enter uh, Andrew Economou, who I was talking to Rachel about. He, <laughs> yeah. This is a 69-year-old lawyer uh, who was a federal prosecutor in Atlanta yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the 80s, uh, took some time off from the practice of law, now describes himself as kind of a, a kind of substitute teacher style uh, assistant district attorney. A contract in, prosecutor. In Brunswick, Georgia, yeah. four hours south of Atlanta, yeah. small town on the coast. Uh, and, and this is, as of tonight, according to the Trump legal team, the guy who's in charge now of the criminal defense. He does have some experience with criminal uh, cases, but nothing on this scale. And as I said to Rachel, uh, when the movie gets made, yeah. this is the part you want to play. Yeah, it's the a guy part, who right? comes from yeah. a small town up to D.C. Yeah. I mean, like, to take on the special prosecutor. Uh, you know, you, you, we ask this question over and over again. Why does Donald Trump have to turn to a fellow like this? Why is he having such trouble hiring good lawyers? We, we have an answer tonight. John Dowd's a good, a good example. But you look at anybody who's in, the, in the, the Washington legal firmament, looks at what's happened to John Dowd and what, uh, where he now sits in the soup and in the sights, as Harry Lippman put it, uh, in the last two segments, in those last two comments. That's why you have to turn to a guy like this. Now you turn to a guy like this, and let's not diss him because he's done. He could have been done. Important. I know you're yeah, not. I'm, I'm not. just saying he's he done it. Could, could have a, a reputable career, have done important work. Uh, local law enforcement matters. He's probably prosecuted some important cases and put some people behind bars who deserve to be behind bars. So let's give the guy his due. But then let's also say that he is um, at best uh, a maybe a really good uh, single A shortstop who's being asked to pitch in the World Series, uh, which is not really uh, the thing you generally want to do in the World Series. He's, he's someone who obviously, just on the basis of what we know about him, on the basis of his resume and his record, is not suited to the job he's now being compelled to take on. And man, there's nothing. Almost, it almost is more, more dramatizes Donald Trump's difficulty with hiring a decent legal team more than not having a lawyer, is having this lawyer as your main criminal defense lawyer uh, under these circumstances. Now you've got me rooting for him. I mean, the guy that you couldn't have a bigger <laughs> underdog in this story. It reminds me of an observation that uh, Jimmy Breslin wisely made about uh, uh, Watergate, Jill, uh, when he said that the night law school guys in the House of Representatives, meaning uh, Peter Rodino and some of these people, uh, knocked over all those Harvard Law School guys that uh, Richard Nixon had uh, defending him. Uh, but we will come back to Andrew Economou when we know <laughs> more about him, and I'm sure we will learn more about him. Harry, how to pronounce his name. And Craig, letting that, I'm I'm open to suggestion. Harry Lippman, Jill Weinbanks, John Hellman, thanks for this round of discussion. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.